Okay, pilots. I'm going to show you a few tricks here on my Stuka. Now, I'm, I've got the canopy off here. And it's not going to be green no more. And I really don't want to sit here and tape up all these little individual window panes. So I'm going to have, you know, Sharpie here. Um, on the canopy here, you've got a rise on the framework. It, it, it rises up. So if you're real careful, you can get you a kind of a wide Sharpie marker. And you just got to be careful. Just barely put it on that line. Now this is black going over top of green. I don't know what red would do over green. I don't know what it, if it changed the color or not. I don't know. Doing no quick moving like it. <laughs> Got caught in a towel there and jerked out me. Now when painting with a sharpie, like staying. Going in the same direction, just overlapping. Sometimes it, it don't leave those streaks in it when you do it like that. Sometimes it does. And usually doing it twice don't do no help. It, it seems to soften up the ink and just move it all around again. So if you can just get that thing with a little single stroke like so as much as you can. You got green, now it's black. Not too bad looking. Okay. Landing gear. I'll finish it up later. Well, let's go ahead and finish talking about our cockpit here. Got my man in.
Got my gun cut down. It's even gonna be in his hand, folks. It's even gonna be in his hand. It's gonna sit just like so. I'm gonna cut a hole right in the center of the glass. Not down here, not up here, but right in the center of the glass. Tore my little ball there, I'll line up. Cut the barrel, shortened it, cut the handle off. Before I glued the barrel on and slid the ball on, drilled a hole into the base, took the barrel and grinded it to where I could get a pin sticking out the back of it where it fit in that pin and then I just glued it and held it straight the best I could. And that's how, that's, that's, that's where the gun is gonna go in right here. They sticking out the back. Alright. That's what I gotta do to the canopy. I'm not gonna I'm gonna sit here and do it. Because I've been wanting. So when you when you when you're taping up stuff, pots, when you're taping up like tires on landing gear, I mean we can sit here and take all these little screws out and take it apart, take it apart. You know that you could do that and and do a kind of check on it and everything, make sure everything's okay. Or you just try to you just try to tape it up as best you can. I'm shoving that tape up in there. Trying to get that piece in there. Got the, got the wheel turned here as much as I can. I'm getting my last piece in there in an angle. Trying to shove it down in there. Get all the way down in there. There we go. Bring it around my tire. Uh, some, some tires is not don't have a plane here, it ain't that hard to tape up. Folding this over, go ahead and put my other piece on. It don't seem like it's wanting to stick good, maybe that's some kind of a rubber or something that they've made out of that and it's not wanting to stick good at all. I'm gonna get my tire covered up here and then shove it down in there a little bit. Another piece on it. And I can bring this, since it's turning a little bit, I can bring this all the way out here. And a piece on it here. It's covered good on the other side, but if it starts to move on you, you know, it's going to roll around. I have to do this. I have to stay late tonight. I ain't get home until after 6 o'clock. I had a car, well, it was actually a, a SUV, Kia. Had it ready in the booth, paint, put the sealer on it, had it all ready to go. Mixed the paint. <laughs> Good Lord, pots, the paint was so far off, I couldn't paint that thing in that color. I said, hey, man. So I went in there on the computer and looked up a couple of the alternates and mixed up a couple of the alternates that they had on there, and neither one of them really looked good. So I took some of one color and mixed it in, just poured it in with a little bit one, a little bit with this one. Went in there and sprayed a spray out pattern, so I'm going to fit in. <clears throat> I mean, it was right on. But it took me 30 minutes of this to do that. And trying to tint the color and everything, get everything right. There's little things you run into like that. At the end of the day, you have to stick around and get it done. You can't just sit there and let it and stop. 
but that's okay. I got the overtime in. These guys pay overtime. So I don't mind having to stay late a little bit. Come on, Lee. No, we ain't want to stick to that tire at all. Turn the wheel a little bit. Stick with that tire. That tire must be made out of silicone rubber. We're going to get taped up. Just an old scotch pad that we use at work to kind of get around the edges and stuff, to make sure it's got a scratch on it before we paint them. And you can use some, sometimes you can use the SOS pad that doesn't have soap on it in it, or you can, these other kind of scuff pads you can buy to do cleaning and, and kitchen wear. But I don't like taking a piece, if, if there's nothing wrong with it, if there's no chips in it, nothing you've done to fix anything, I don't like taking a piece of just sandpaper and sanding plastic because it makes it, it just makes it look for us. And if you prime it, your primer might not, not even stick to it. Plastics are made, especially stuff coming out of China, pilots. We don't know what in the world kind of material they're making this stuff out of. This could be stuff that's illegal to make things in the U.S. with. And, you, know, you just don't know what more you're messing with. We'll get an aftermarket bumper in or something like that on the car, and we'll sit there and paint three times because we can't get paint to stick to it. After we get done painting it, we just take an air blower and blow on it real hard and just sheets of paint just starts going off of it. So we got to call the paint company, hey man, we ain't, you know, ain't something ain't right here. We got to get something stuck to this bumper here. And they'd, they'd come out and they'd use another different type of adhesion promoter. And it might do the same thing. And they might use another and it'll finally work. I got a decal right here. I really ain't too worried about it, but they, they kind of, these are the stick on type. So the best thing to do with stick on type spots is get them off. Decals, you can paint over decals and you might see just a little bit of the edge around it after you painted it. But if you paint over a sticker, oh Lord have mercy, you just, you just ask me for trouble. Even though it tears the thing all up, does the damage, 
I advise you to take them deep sticker decals off. Take down these edges real good. Now on my Japanese Val dive bomber, we was talking about landing extra landing gear, buying extra landing gear and parts for your plane whenever you buy it, you know. Well, I did with this plane. I had some extra landing gear, but I used them to make my landing gear for my Val dive bomber. And what I done, my Val dive bomber, I literally cut this whole section right here out. See? Had this base up here and glued it back down here after I cut this out. Took it apart, gutted the inside because it's got all these support fins, you know, walls in here. And, you know, I literally cut most of that light out so that my original landing gear, the zero that I turned into a valve dive bomb would go in here and line up right. So put the landing gear on, put it back together, screwed it up in the mat and reinforced it. Didn't plug the landing gear up in the plane so I wouldn't accidentally hit the switch and, you know, would, would, that'd be trouble. So I gotta get all this glue off. I don't know what kind of glue you use, but I, got, I, can't, I can't leave it on there because I don't know what kind it is. And if you use two different kind of glue, sometimes it just don't mix. It never hardens, it'll come right back off. So we're gonna get as much of that off as I can. Not much on it. And pilots, I was taking them hinges on the wings and, you know, checking them. And the ones that was loose, you know, when I would pull them off, they just barely had a little bit of glue stuck to put on. Just, I mean, just, I mean, you can see where that's white. Well, let's see if I can turn it when you see it might be too bright. Anyway, there's a little bit of white glue on it. That's about all I had on that hinge to hold it on. So I took those loose ones off. I'm gonna re-glue all them. I replaced one of the flap sections that got bent. I just replaced it. I didn't, I thought about it and thought about it, thought about it, changing the wing over. Man, I didn't want to take all the wires out of that thing strip all that tape off to get the wires out and I wouldn't have been able to reuse it and I don't have any more. So I'm going with it. Going with the original parts right now and just save my wings in case I ever need them. All right, that's the best I can do. I'm gonna do the same thing here with this piece of plastic. I'm just gonna rub, kind of take that pad and rub it real good. I probably ain't putting but about a 2,000 millimeter Scratch in or 2,000, 2,000 millimeter, 2,000 grit scratch in the thing. But it's, it's putting something on there for that paint to bond to. And pilots, they, they green on the original plane, you know, original model, they green. So I'm gonna paint them tan, even though the bottom of the plane is, is gray. There's a couple little things I'm gonna to have to touch up gray. I'm gonna try my best to use the factory gray on the bottom. And I'm also have decided to use this decal on the wing. Here's the flap section I gotta replace. But this big yellow decal right here, now this one right here, it's a decal, it's not a sticker, so I'm gonna leave it on there, but it's gonna get painted over. But this is a sticker. So I'm gonna tape this off. Here, here, and I'm gonna leave that yellow on the end of the wing. And since this is a sticker, well, I ain't even gonna, well, I don't even have to do nothing out here. I'm not even gonna paint down here. What am I talking about? But this is what I was talking about. All these, all these wires here. Look at all this stuff going everywhere in this wing. I mean, it goes all the way here because it's got factory lights. And all this stuff, I got this, but all the rest of the decals I don't have, the, the stickers. And I had to take all the servos out. It had this thing in it. I had to take this off. I'm afraid I'd tear it up if I'd done that. You know? So I'm just going to glue these fins, these uh, fins, these hinges down here. Put this one right here. It's a little bit different color, but I can live with that. That's got the glue right there. Another wing is just simply
think we're gonna be painting it. All right, and we got our tail feathers here. Let me get, let's see. Let me get that one. Got that one pretty good. I need to go that one. It's got a shine to it. I do one side. a little ribbon. I couldn't do this one because that's got the glue on it. It feels like foam tack, but I don't know. I don't know. It could be Gorilla Glue. It could be anything. Get all that off. Side on that one, get that off. All right, that's that. Uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna be sanding any. I mean, there's hardly nothing wrong with it, Pops. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. So I'm just gonna slightly rub over this. Just slightly. Not even really trying to get in the grooves and that. Just kind of letting it slide right over. Got no decals to worry about. I can paint this right here. That's fine. Yeah, that horns are good. I'm gonna use it. I got gray on the tip here, so I gotta think about that. I gotta think about, about. Am I gonna worry about that gray being out there, or I'm just gonna go ahead and? Take my spray can in an angle like so, painting this way where to blow paint here, but it, it'll miss here. I don't want to get nothing there. So literally, what I'm going to do to camo this thing, Pops, yeah, I've, <clears throat> I got me an airbrush. I traded my DX8, no, DX6E for it. And I'm gonna try it out. But right now I'm just gonna show you here. trying to do is just kind of put spots here and there. Just kind of put spots here and there. Get this over here where it won't get nothing in yet. We're doing it this way to the plane, same way I'm doing it right now. and then I might go back and kind of detail this right here but sometimes you can use the comp but, but if, if the plane's got got some camouflage on it kind of go with that use that a little bit you know your lines is not going to be unless you want to tape it off I was telling Roy that night on straight lines see Put you a little bit of baby powder, just a little bit, not a whole lot, but just put you a little bit right here and a little bit right there. But just put it on your finger and just kind of rub on it right there and right there and then run your piece of tape right straight across, right straight across. But make sure it ain't done on here before you paint it. If you get any baby powder on the part you paint and get it off, simple damp cloth. Getting my edges here. I put a little bit right here. Just 
just like coop. And then up next, after I show you here a little bit of camouf camouflage, and I got one of my 190, extra 190 spinners. I'm gonna see if I can show you how to put a sp uh, spiral in it. And I'm just gonna put just one more coat on this. Just I'm just giving you an idea. Get my brown ready. Let's see, this is good, yeah, this is Krylon. It shouldn't take long to dry. Let's do a little bit more right here. Get her in the front. Get that covered. Get my side covered. Remember how I told you to hold it? I'm holding it in an angle here, spraying down on it. Same way on the edges here and here. Holding it down with my angle. And over here, I'm coming over here so I won't get none on that raw. All right, I ain't gonna worry about that because I'm gonna try to get brown on that. Oh, got a spot here, got a spot here. Let me get that little fin there, whatever that is, air brake. All right, let's let that sit there a minute. Let's get our spinner out. This is not really what we worried about. It's right here. Okay. So this thing screws on. All right, so you've got no idea where this is gonna line up at. So you wait until last before you do that. Okay, don't worry about this piece right now. Okay. looking for some kind of a mark. A little defect in the plastic or something. And that looks like something right there. I know you won't be able to see it. See that little defect in the plastic right there? I'm gonna use that as my starting point. Okay. way. I want about a 30 degree angle. As the tape, as the spinner is getting smaller, the tape's going to want to pull this way. So you got to force that tape to go the way you want it to go. Okay. So it's gonna have a wrinkle forming here, but it's, if you just tighten them up, just kind of push one way and then the other and get those wrinkles to tighten up. And, and you might, yes, you might have just a little bit of a bleed through, yeah. But it ain't nothing but a little bit of, uh, uh, if your wife's got some uh, fingernail polish remover, you take it right off. Now it's gonna get even worse as you get along because it's coming to a point. I mean, it's coming to a point. It might take two or three times pilots to do this. I'm not saying it's gonna be done the first time. And sometimes when you get down here in the bottom, it kind of on your, on your, on your little wrinkles there, it leaves a little rough line. So you might take a razor blade here and straighten this up just a little bit. But you're just trying to maintain that 30 degree angle. So you're trying to maintain the 30 degree angle.
no, it's not easy. It's not easy. All right, and when you get up here to the tip, now it's gonna be, I mean, it's gonna be even worse. It's not gonna be no jumping. Then you got to remember also, you got you, you running into your tape over here. So you want about the thickness of the line that you want over here. You remember that. And then when you get to the tip, I mean, there's no way you, unless you sit here with your razor blade and, and trim your tape up. So what I do is I just go ahead and stick it down. I got a good distance here, right here. That's all I'm really worried about is right here. Okay. Move this up a little bit. Just taking my finger now and pushing the tape down, not cutting it, just pushing it down. looking pretty good at the front here too but what I'm wanting to do at the front it usually comes around into a little circle so that that little circle will represent the 20 millimeter gun hole that's right here in the center for the for the gun so the only thing we really want to do is try to leave a little dot right there in the center just a dot it ain't got to be a perfect circle just a dot Come around here. I'm trying to maintain that same distance of thickness here and make that circle, but sometimes it don't work. And I'm not gonna go here and sit here and play around with it. I'm getting this done. Right, right here I'm a little thick or a little thin right here with the line, so I'm just gonna take my razor blade and straighten that up a little bit. Let's see what we're looking like now. All right, but your tape's thick where it overlaps, so sometimes you guys need to take your razor blade and go back and kind of cut that area there too. Real good. Don't let this thing slip and cut your finger wide off wide open part. Trying to leave that little spot there that you don't want to do. Let me see here. have our line getting a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller as we get closer to the center there. Taking my finger now, pushing that tape back where I think it needs to be. Alright. I just 
mess it up here. Coming all the way back here to where I'm getting about the same, the, the right thickness, you know. Want that line to stay about the same thickness all the way around. Now this one's gonna be pretty simple to put on here. It kind of just follows, the tape kind of just goes with the flow. And it's important to tape up the rest of the spinner that you don't want to get nothing on. take my little scotch pad again something keeps falling out right there let me get him on gotta fall got a, got a straggler here get off of me get off of me you are just gonna be the death of me ain't you okay corner there was stuck out too much. I'm lining that up, not cutting it with a razor blade, just pushing it up right with my thumb. All my creases here looks pretty good and pushed down. Just a good tough spot here. Because all we really want to do is just push down right on that little line that we just made. Try not to damage our tape doing this. So just a little bit of a scratch and I got to see if I can find a tip to put on the white. Get up here this tip and you gotta be careful. Just just take it easy. Just kind of borrow the moving that thing back and forth. Just putting a little something there for that tape to hold, that paint to hold on to. And knowing what kind of plastic this might be made out of it, you know. That's why all these spray can companies that come out and say, oh, it sticks to plastic. It sticks to plastic. This is a plastic coat. It tries to. Get my little stragglers off. Okay. stuff that you put on. Yeah. Let's go back to this here. Let's get this finished up. Got some brown here. We got a spot we hadn't painted yet. Trying to point my paint this away and try to keep as little of it to get onto the tan as possible. Now, sometimes you can, you, you, you know, you got you start spraying and it starts bringing out these real big spots. Well, just kind of take you, take you can do that after a little bit. Yeah, it, it, I mean, you know. Get on my front right here. I wanna make sure I get all that green covered up. Okay. Now I've got splatter. Yeah, just very little, very little. But I've got an area here that's not covered. Not covered right there. I ain't got hardly no black left. See if I got anything. Yeah, just a little bit. All right, let's try. I just 
just got a little bit of black. It ain't gonna do it. Come on, baby, just one more. There right, we go. Okay. Now this is this is flat. It'll it'll it. No, I can't touch it again. But that's my desert camo polish right there. You see, you see. Now I can go back, I always go back with an airbrush and just spray that color into my old cup. And man, I can get in with nice detail, make a nice line with it and all that stuff. But you know, I can do that too. And I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it on a couple different things. But that's my that's my desert camera. Have little spots like that all over the plane. Alright, now let me see if I can find one. I ain't got any. I ain't got no white neither. Got no white neither. Let's see here. Yep, that might be it. Same can. Look at the can. Look at the can. Not the name of the brand. The can. See the difference in the can? Can't see it because of this, but this is a different can. I'll bet you this cat won't fit and work on those. Bet you it won't. So I try to find a can that's the same kind. Yep. See, my nozzles has got a little bit of a different, uh, got just a little bit of different shapes at the end. Let's see what I got in the white. Let's see if I can get anything to come out. Yeah, there comes something. There comes the wind. getting on that landing gear because I got to paint it anyway and it's going to win on my towel. I want a wet towel. I want a wet towel. Don't over wet it. When you got stuff taped up like this, just lightly coat it. Because if you sit there and wet it, it's going to run all up under you tape in. It's just going to take off with you. Let me see if I can get this little piece of dirt out of it. Always something, always something. Come on now, I ain't got much paint left here. Let me just put a little bit on. Let that sit there. Let it sit and dry. Let you watch paint dry for a little bit. Now, I know I'm not going to be able to untape it now, Pops. Ain't no way it's stuff dry fast enough for me to do this. I'm just giving you an idea here. If you want to do this to you, spinners. They don't have to be a German warbird. I mean, they just put them on everything. Yeah, you know, everything. See, what we got there? What is that? Oh, that's the screws. That's screws for the prop. And the prop bags even got screws for the prop in. So I'm going to have some screws. I'm going to have some, looks like 15, 20 millimeter screws. I a bunch of them left over. And pilots, if you need one of these props now, if you need one of these 190 props, just get in touch with me. And, and I'm not going to charge you. If you live clean across the country now, I mean, the shipping for Roy's props is $11, and I didn't give a crap about that. I want to see Roy's beat 26 in there. That's what I want to see. I want to see my planes in there too soon, pilots, and we will. If it don't, it, I mean, I got home, like I said, I didn't get home at six o'clock and it's Tuesday night and I was dead gum tired didn't even feel like coming here and doing this. I had a couple of them request a way to put this power on a spinner. And I can tell by it sitting on the ground here, I've got my little spot in just a little bit of the wrong spot, but that's, that's okay. That's all right. I've already got paint on it. I'm gonna maneuver that spot over just a little bit. Just a little bit. There we go. All right. Now that's 
not the last coat. I'll put another coat on because it's black and I'm painting it with white. It might take a couple coats to get it going. I know you can't half see it. Let's get it up here, maybe you see it in that light. There we go. But it takes a couple coats for white to cover black. But that's it, Pops. That's the way I do it. If it don't have a decal in it, them decals was even harder to put on than what I just done. <laughs> See if I can touch it somewhere where it ain't no. Okay, I'll put that back down. Okay, pilots. That's my tip of the day. I got my landing gear taped up. I'll paint that tan. Got them little struts there inside there. I'll paint them tan. Get them a little odd and ends done. And then we'll go for the meat. I'm out.